Yeah, welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and we've invited Mr. Jide Johnson, Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning, Mr. Jide Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to meet you, and good morning to our viewers. All the it's All a pleasure right. to Thanks for joining us. Okay. Well, beginning this morning with the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, Open, Graze It, and Spare Parts Comparison. Malami under fire as Akiridulu South stakeholders lampoon AGF. The writers reads, comparing open grazing to spare parts sale betrays terrible mindset. And that's according to Akiridulu. Senate spokesman once Malami fired says AGF under primordial sentiment. Stand thoughtless, prejudicial, or hanese. Comments nonsensical, says Falano. Above the headlines in the Punch newspaper, experts cap at CBN say serial Naira devaluation threatens economy and Nigerians. Government's frets as CBN insists budget support repayments starts May. NLC meets on governor's 380 Naira per liter patrol proposal today, experts 1FG. Suspend June electricity tariff hike, National Assembly tells NERC. Also on the Punch newspaper, FG sets up a nine-man panel to address Kaduna NLC face-off. Abdul Salami here saying divert infrastructural funds to tackle insecurity. Also on the Punch newspaper, below the headline, we see a picture here of a fighter jet and uh, lots of people here posing for a group photograph. The caption reads, NAF takes delivery of 26th fighter jets, CAS boost of enhanced capacity. Five killed as hoodlums clash over election banner in Lagos. Police dismiss bombing rumor, one dies in Obasanjo's library explosion. Local government poll, Oyo declares Friday holiday, APC in court demands postponement. Soldiers avenging airman's death arrest Lagos residents destroy vehicles, and that's in Oshodi. Fourth wife stabs husband to death for impregnating new lover. Ayade becomes APC leader in Cross River State, says state must join center. Those are the stories in the Punch newspaper. The Nigerian Tribune, let's see what we can find over here. The big one there says, open grazing, you are wrong, lawyers tell Malami. Olani Pekun, Rotimi Williams, Ubani, Abari Bay, Middle Belt Forum, and others slam the AGF. We will implement ban with vigor, says Akere Dolu, Northern Governors Forum, uh, Northern Go Governors Forum banned uh, open. I'm not sure what that is. Or rather, okay, Northern Fo Governors Forum banned open grazing before Southern Governors Forum, says Falano. And also, uh, open grazing outdated, says uh, Mieti Allah's patron. We can also see how Aneze reacts and also saying his remarks are prejudicial. Yes, we built 30 million Naira mosque in Borno, and that is from Agrika Ministry. There was a leaked memo showing a 30 million Naira uh, contract awarded to build a mosque from the Ministry of Agriculture, and that's what they're responding to. I left PDP for APC because of Buhari's attributes, Cross River State Governor Ayade says. Petrol uh, subsidy removal? Oil marketers back governors. Gas explosion rocks Obasanjo's presidential library, one feared dead. And also, now is the time to revisit a 2014 Confab report to rescue Nigeria, says Olabi Durujai. Oshimbajo wades into governor's CBN dispute over budget facility repayment. And Boko Haram leader Shikao seriously wounded after attempting to kill himself to avoid capture. Uh, we can also see here, federal government directs Kaduna government to follow principle of redundan redundancy, sets up a 10-man <laughs> committee to negotiate. And lastly, reps halt proposed hike of, uh, hike of electricity tariff, raise concern over 2020 IMF report, and probe discos over transfer of debts to new users. These are the big ones on the Nigerian Tribune. On the Nation newspaper, anti-open grazing ban AGF Malami under fire. Governors CBN differ on loan repayment plan. Abdul Salami to government forgets projects, fund insecurity. 
Controversy over Shakao in Boko Haram Iswap clash. Negotiation on petrol price ongoing, says NNPC. Gas explosion kills man in a passenger's library. Woman stabs husband to death. I dumped PDP for APC to take Cross River State to center, says Ayade. Also on the Nation newspaper, World Bank rejects debt cancellation for Africa. Also, bandits kill em Emir's son. And lastly, 10-man panel to settle Kaduna labor dispute. Those are the stories on the Nation newspaper. All right. Uh, good morning once again. Jide Johnson. Uh, so many of uh, these very interesting stories. Uh, I guess we can start from anywhere you choose. Well, I think we should start from the comment of the Attorney General, who happens to be the Chief Law Officer, whose pronouncement gives a direction and indication as to what the administration and dispensation of justice should look like in the country. I must say this, that uh, I was not only disappointed, I was disturbed that if, if this is the quality of thinking and the level of intelligence, that governs the kind of counsel this important office gives to the president with respect to administration of justice, dispensation of justice, adherence to constitutionalism, then we are in danger. We are in danger of entrenching um, um, dictatorial powers that existed under the military regime whereby the pronouncement of the head of state becomes the law, and whatever decree that they set up have outstar clauses that takes away the power of the courts. And probably the attorney general is still existing in the era of military regime, but this is the democracy. Even though we have not got into democracy, we are still in a civilian administration, because if it's in a democratic side, the attorney general will have been forced to resign. Um, and this should not come as a surprise to many Nigerians because uh, over, over the years, in the last six years, the Attorney General has demonstrated um, some certain disposition to on, towards non-respect for constitutionalism and issues that has to do with due process. For example, you remember when the National Assembly summoned the President, I remember the House of Rep in his first term. He was the one that counseled the president not to attend that. It's not, it's not duty but to attend that particular, that particular program. Now, if the attorney general is speaking, he's the attorney general of the federation. He's not the attorney general of the defense council or the attorney for Katuriaras. And if governors in the south, if he says governor in the south, cannot ban upon crazy, I don't know where he wants governor to 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 then we can do open prostitution on the street of Nigeria. We can do open prostitution on the street of, of the North. And I don't know what he has done or his pronouncement concerning his bar police arresting people during the month of Ramadan for eating. When it is the constitutional right of the, the constitutional right of anybody to fast or not to fast. I don't know what he has said concerning the Northern governors banning the sale of alcohol in the north, and yet, with the highest level of hypocrisy and playing the ostrich, collects revenue that were collected from part on alcoholic consumption. I don't know if any northern governor will allow the sale of pork meat in the north. So when such statement came from the Attorney General of the Federation, you must be disappointed. You m but beyond disappointment, you must be disturbed that if this is the quality and the level of intelligence that governs that office. And there's more to there's more to be desired. Um, just just look at the comparison. The analogy is faulty. It's is not relevant. It does not just make any kind of sense. There's no justification for such. And I love the reply of the Ondo State Governor. I love the reply. It, who happens to be um, the person that coordinated the meeting? of the Southern governors in worry. He was the one that coordinated the meeting. You know, he came out and he said that he was not the chairman. He just coordinated, he was just appointed. To, and he came up with a fantastic statement uh, to, to, to that effect, telling the attorney general to, them, to let them meet in the court. Uh, sometimes you begin to wonder how the 
sonship in Nigeria, how it is given. Because I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure the kind of statement, analogy, and comments we got from the Attorney General of the Education is like the is like a statement or counsel you get from a senior advocate of Nigeria. You are not a senior advocate of cow, cow yaras or animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. You are senior advocate of Nigeria and you are the Attorney General of, of, of the Federation and Minister of Justice. And you could see from left, right, and center is received. I'm sure that interview, with the benefit of insight, you will have regretted taking that particular interview and taking that. But, but it is very good for us because it gives us an indication of his mindset and it gives us an indication of the totality of what our dispensation administration of justice is like and adherence to constitutionalism. Right. We've seen how radar agencies of government have issues, particularly okay. under this present administration. Um, all right, let's move away from there and uh, move to Cross River State where Governor Ben Ayade has uh, you know, defected from the PDP to the APC. He says he's uh, joining the APC, um, you know, of course, to help President Mohamed Bouhari move the country forward and uh, because, of course, he uh, you know, enjoys the ideologies after, of the president. How many years? After how many years? After six years in PDP, he's not joining when the administration of Bouhari is coming to an end. Look, it's Nigerians are loosely over politicians. The politicians are, no matter how hard it rains, um, it cannot, the rain cannot wash up the dark spot in in a leopard. There's no difference. I said it. It's there in the public domain. I said it as well back as 2015, as well as 20, 2011. There's, there's no difference between Nigerian political parties. They are just the same. They are just, they are chameleon. They are PDP in the morning, APC in the night. APC in the morning, PDP in the night. If you check the actors and players, in the political landscape. It is middle, It is the same set of people that have been ruling us since 1999 that are there. Just take Buhari out of the equation. It is the same set of Even if you put Buhari in the equation, as Buhari not being part and parcel of, of, of those that have been ruling us um, since, since, since we are young, he was head of state while I was in, in, in secondary school. Now president, after I've left the university and I've given birth to to, to, to children and my son is in the university. So while I was in secondary school, was the president was the head of state. While my son is in the university, is still the are we moving forward? Uh, or we are moving. Or we are moving backwards. So I'm not surprised by the character of the political class. And this is not just the last. This is just the beginning. You see movement. Martin Selechi moved because of worry. You see that our politics is, is is shaped around personality. I had this question as far back as 2015, that we are looking at the issue of personality. Are we looking at the issue of competence? That beyond, beyond the personality of whoever we want to elect to office, are we looking at the capacity of the person to deliver? There's no way you will give, you will enter a flight with a pilot that has no, that has no qualification, that has no degree, that has no competence, that has no knowledge of flying, and then it, because it's, he has integrity, and you enter the aircraft with for him to fly you from Lagos to Abuja. Do not enter the aircraft, no matter the integrity. I said beyond integrity, you must look at the capacity. And some of us that said it in 2015, we look like idiots. We look like fools. Said so we are looking for someone that has integrity. I said beyond integrity, you must think about capacity. You can never, that was the analogy I gave, you can never fly an aircraft Whose pilot does not have the competence and the knowledge of flying the aircraft, no matter how the level of integrity. And that's why I found it. People like Ayadi, look, let me let me tell you this. Have you seen how the governor of Cross River? I remember when he was elected as governor in 2015, I happened to go to Calabar for a program. And I saw the governor having about six, seven titles in front of his name. Doctor, professor, chief, and this and that. So it tells you the character. They will still move. The governor of a point state moved. Um, the other governors that will move, the last time the PDP governor went to Zamfara to, preside, to prevent the governor of, um, of Zamfara from, from crossing over, the governor of Bauchi was, was alleged to have moved and he came up with a statement that is not moving. They will cross carpet because what is being done with it, someone wants to become president. They want to save their political future and they are looking at other equations on how they become relevant. It's not about Dwari. Take Dwari out of, 
out of the equation. It's about their own political interest. It's a deep state. And I look in the present cabinet, present cabinet, Ngigi was in PDP. Amechi was in PDP. They are in the present cabinet. If you look at the, the configuration of the National Assembly and the parties, you discover that they move, they crisscross from one party to the other. They don't care. You know what I use for this? I use this Michael Jackson song. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. They only care about themselves. Yeah. So don't be bothered about a hidden movie. It's about comparing PDP to APC. It's like saying six and a half a dozen. What's the difference between six and a half a dozen? They are the same. They are the same. So I'm not, I'm not pet up. I'm not disturbed. It's just the beginning of people moving that are moving because of what we didn't say i'm moving because of nigeria i'm moving to ensure that there is there is um deliv there is deliverance of deliverables of democracy in my state it's moving after six years it's not serious and then there's a need for us to come up with a strong constitutional provisions that if you leave your party in the course of you being elected you should forfeit your seat when we do that, we have serious minded people, not okay. people jumping, jumping sheep from one party to the other. And you could see how they wasted state resources. Some governors of APC left their state and went to to to, to Calabar to welcome him. Even the chairman of APC, the chairman of um, the, the Africa chairman of APC, is the governor of UB State. I'm not sure he has been to his state to govern that state. He's busy running junketing and trucketing Nigeria. It's wow. because we don't hold them accountable. And all that's right, why they can do all this nonsense that I'm crossing over from one party mm. to the other. It's political prostitution, and that's what has characterized our political dispensation since 1999. All right. So what do you expect from prostitute? All you right. get Hold anything. On, they are engaged in political prostitution. They will not give you anything. You can't hold them to. They are characterless human beings. They have no integrity. They have Johnson, nothing to show for it. Kindly hold on. There's a conflicting reports about Abu Bakr Shekau either being dead or seriously injured. Some reports have it that he uh, died yesterday. And, of course, uh, the uh, papers this morning say he was uh, seriously injured after trying to escape being uh, captured by uh, ISWAP uh, fighters. Uh, quickly, also, let's uh, get your thoughts on that one before we uh, move to another topic. Is a cat with nine lives. How many times has he died? How many times has he been injured? That we have had the story. He was dead, he was not dead. He was alive, he was not alive. I think um, until we see footage of when Osama bin Laden was captured, we saw footage of how he was captured. When um, Mama Gaddafi, um, which most Africans are regretting, that was gotten rid of um, by, by the Western powers in Libya, we saw footage of it. When um, al-Baghdadi, the head of Israel, was gotten rid of, we saw footage of it. In with Chekau has died many times and he has come back to life. In fact, his own resurrection is more than that of Jesus Christ. He has resurrected as many times as possible. So don't they, let's take this with a pinch of salt and wait whether Chekau will resurrect again because over the years, father has been injured, he's been, whatever. But the question we need to ask is, is he an injured that the Nigerian military cannot get to? Over the years, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, until we see footage of of his of his dead body, we will not come to the conclusion that he's okay. is dead. So, the Mr. Jimmy Johnson still, will still continue. Yes, I would like to ask you about the NLC Kaduna State uh, standoff, basically. So they called of the strike, and uh, the Kaduna State government said they would constitute a nine-man panel or a 10-man committee, basically, to look into the situation. So firstly, does this not sound familiar? You know, the setting up of panels and, you know, Nigerians expecting to see the outcome of that. And also, um, let's also get your thoughts on the NLC uh, meeting on governor's 380 per litre uh, petrol proposal today. Yeah, that's, that's even a larger story. Nigeria is a monoproduct economy. You know, last week we spoke about commodity price index, and we talked about inflationary rate, we talked about standard of living and cost of living, and we said that we've seen that cost of living has been on the high, on the increase, and then the standard of living of the Arabic Nigerian has dropped because of the inflation, because um, over the year, whether government printed or not printed money, and we said the 
price of goods is an indication of whether government printed money or not. Because inflation is when there's too much money pushing few goods and uh, your 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 supply cannot meet up with your demand. So that created a problem. Now if government wants to if there is a government that has split on the intelligence of Nigerians, I think it's this present government. And I stand by my by the conviction of my opinion. Um, because we were told that there's no subsidy. The, the, you see, we just react to issues happening globally. We are told that there is no subsidy. Where yeah, are you going to get this? If you increase the prices, if you hike um, that of petrol from to 389, they, they've been saying it, they deny it. Once government fly the kite, they want to prepare our mind towards it. They've said it's 400 naira over two months ago. What will happen? What would they cost somebody to transport himself from one location to another one? Two, what would it cost to move goods from the north to the south? In very plain, Nigerians would pay for it. What do you think? Anything that will put money in the pocket of the governors, they will support it. You see, the governors went and they quickly supported that <coughs> that issue because they know we will not we will not say anything. We are not holding them accountable. The money they've collected in the last three years, in the last two years, what have they done with it? The one they've collected in the last 22 years, 22 years what have they <coughs> what have they done? What have they done with it? excuse me? So NLC, just see anything that involves the NLC and government, just know that it's a fake account. As this NLC hold government accountable, have they hold government by the scrub of the neck? Have they have they achieved anything from this government? They will go for the negotiation. Once they go for the negotiation, they will intimidate them, they will, they will put they will dangle carrot, they will use carrot and stick approach. Some of them will compromise themselves, and at the end of the day, well, they will say, Okay, we are reasoning with government. Well, Let government Johnson, quickly, this, quickly this also add. You see, the marketers, I'm coming, just give me a minute. Yeah. The marketers also, the marketers also said they supported government. Why would marketers not support federal government? Why? For example, if anything would put more money in my pocket, will I not support it? Why should we hear the views of marketers? We should hear the views of Nigerians. What is the National Assembly saying concerning that? The executive alone cannot wake up and increase the price of petroleum products without an input from the legislature. But we told Nigerians, we told them that the current structure of the National Assembly, the leadership, is one of the most moribund, and history we put them in the right place they belong, is one of the most moribund, inactive, insensitive leadership we have ever had. And most of the, look, Lawan, the Senate president has been in the Senate, has been in the National Assembly since 1999. The Speaker of the House of Rep has been in the House of Rep since 2003. Do they want to die there? Is it their father's property? And as really, they are far away from reality. And the, the legislature that should serve as checks and balances on the executive recklessness, they are not doing that. Rather, the, the, rather they will go to Asuro to meet the president. Instead of the president coming to the National Assembly to come and meet them, they will go to themselves with their, with their tails in between their legs. They will go to Asuro to meet the president. Well, we get the price of leadership we pay for in Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, let them increase it. It's just a matter of time. When Nigerians are satisfied with this, we all go through it. There's a particular scene in my local dialect. Everyone we fall, we not fall on the head of, of, of one person. We fall on the head of everybody. Right. But I'll close with this on this matter. Okay. Everyone involved in this decision, don't buy for it. Everyone, everyone involved that will take decisions that affect, don't buy for it. They don't buy. They don't pay for their DSTV. They don't pay... They don't pay there's for their bills. There's also uh, they don't thoughts pay. on a hike in, uh, in, uh, a hike in uh, electricity tariff uh, that the reps have halted. That's another one. That's, that's, they, don't, they don't pay those bills. They don't pay. I'll ask you this question. When was the last time the Minister of Transport used his own personal fund to pay for his utility bills, for, his, for the cars he drives, or the oh. Minister of Works and Housing, or the Minister of Labor and Productivity? All right, or the, we, we need to wrap Senate, up here. the Senate President or the Speaker of House of Rep. When? Because they don't pay with their own money. They don't. They are far away from reality. And when they travel, they travel with convoys. And they are convoys. And people will run into their convoy. We have situation which we have in the show with the before we came on here with the issue 
of or your state governor denying whether they were involved in my convoy or they are not involved in my convoy. Why should the governor use siren to pursue his employees out of the road? Why? Right, thank you very much. Uh, we are, they were elected yeah, to serve us. No government official should use siren to send the citizen away from the road. All right. the, the, the car they are riding is taxpayers' money. Why should you use siren? If you are going for an event, go early. Don't go late for the event. And don't disturb people that you use their money to fund to to, to fund your government. It is it's, it's unbelievable. And these are the carryovers of military administration. We have such situation. You will not get to the end of this story of that that young girl has been killed. We never we never know whether that young girl will become a governor in the future. That destiny has been concreted out of the recklessness and we, stupidity. We need, we need to go. To Thank, you to Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gilead. You're fired up this Friday morning. Uh, but it's for a good cause, and we appreciate your time it's, and your it's, thoughts. It's, it's painful uh, the way we have been treated. And the bottom line is what Michael Jackson said they don't care about us. <laughs> they'll move from PDP to APC. They'll you form another much. party. Let me tell you the truth they'll form another party before 2023, and they will move to that party. They will change their identity. They have used the concept of branding and part. And a management of perception to deceive us. All so right, Mr. Gilly Johnson. Johnson. Thank you. Commercial products, the candidate. Have a great weekend. Right. <laughs> Good morning. Stay with us today in history comes up next. What happened on this day in uh, um, many, many years ago? I'm going back to the year 1972, the birth of one of the biggest and uh, most uh, uh, famous rappers uh, in history. Hmm. I'm going back to the year 2011 to tell you something we've seen many, many times. The prediction of the end of the world. Do you stay with us?